be looking at anatomy of the lungs. So, every cell in the body requires oxygen to generate energy in the form of ATP. Carbon dioxide is produced as a waste product in these reactions. While we require oxygen to survive, it is the accumulation of carbon dioxide that primarily drives your need to breathe. Carbon dioxide is exhaled and oxygen is inhaled through the respiratory system, which includes muscles to move air into a microscope into and out of the lungs passageways, which ears move, and microscopic gas exchange surfaces called by capillaries. The lungs occupy most of the volume of the chest cavity, also known as the thoracic cavity. The thoracic and abdominal cavity are separated by the diaphragm. There are two lungs, each divided into several lobes, two on the left hand side, three on the right hand side. So in the upper respiratory system we have the nose, nasal cavity, sinuses, pharynx, and the lower respiratory system we have the larynx, trachea, bronchus, lungs, bronchioles, and respiratory bronchioles, and alveoli. So there are two types of zones, the conducting zone and the respiratory zone. In the respiratory zone you have respiratory bronchioles and alveoli, in the conducting zone you have nose, nasal cavity, paranasal sinuses, pharynx, larynx, trachea, bronchi, and bronchioles. So functionally the conducting zone involves the route for incoming and outgoing air. This allows to warm and humidify air coming in. It removes debris and pathogens from incoming air and there's a sense of smell. Functionally the respiratory zone is primarily gas exchange. So looking at the upper respiratory system, you have the nose which is the primary passageway for air entering the respiratory system, the nasal cavity, so where the superior portion of the nasal cavity is olfactory region and this provides a sense of smell. Mucus provides to the paranasal sinuses and tears clean and moisture nasal ca cavities. So within the nose there is the nasal epithelium which contains olfactory receptor cells. So these receptor cells provide signals to the olfactory bulb in which mitral cells are output cells sending signals to the brain regions. So the olfactory pathway is quite unique compared to other sensory systems. Mitral cells in olfactory bulbs send their output to multiple brain regions. A main area is called the piriform cortex, cortex, which is an olfactory cortex. And it's important to note that the thalamus does not directly contribute to olfactory processing. Look at the upper lower, lower respiratory system, you'll have the pharynx, where there's a chamber shared by digestive respiratory systems. Air flows from the pharynx to the larynx through the glottis, which is a slit like opening between vocal cords. You have the epiglottis, which is elastic cartilage, covers the glottis when swallowing and ligaments attached to thyroid cartilage and hyoid bone. You have the trachea windpipe, which is a tough fit flexible tube. The trachea is lined with pseudo stratified silated columnar epithelium. I'm thinking of a reason why that might be. For the lower respiratory system, the trachea branches in the right and left primary bronchi of the carina. Each bronchi divides to form lower, lower bronchi that supply lobes of lungs. Lobe bronchi then branch to form cemental bronchi and each cemental bronchi supplies air to one bronchopulmonary segment. So look at the bronchioles, each cemental bronchus branches into multiple bronchioles. Bronchioles branch into terminal bronchioles, each cemental bronchus forms about 6,500 terminal bronchioles. And each terminal bronchial branches to form several respiratory bronchioles, which are connected to alveoli. So here you have the anterior view of the lungs, which show the bronchial tree and its divisions. So moving on to the respiratory zone, 300 million alveoli are present in the adult lungs with a surface area of 70 to 90 meters squared. Alveoli, pneumo pneumocyte type 1 cells. Or squamous epithelial cells are highly permeable gases and make up 97% of cells in the alveoli. You also have alveolar type 2 pneumocytes which secrete surfactant. And surfactant is an oily secretion that contains phospholipids and proteins and coats the alveolar surface and reduces tension. You also have alveolar macrophages which are immune cells that remove debris and pathogens. So we get gas exchange this occurs, occurs across the blood air barrier of the alveoli and has three layers. It is the fused basement membrane between them, the alveolar cell layer and the capillary endothelial layer. So gas exchange across the blood air barrier is quick and efficient because, diffusing for diff because distance for diffusion is short and oxygen and carbon dioxide are small and lipid soluble. Air tends to move from a region of high pressure to a region of low pressure. Air flows in and out of the lungs because of alternatively Reversing pressure gradients. So let's look at ventilation now. 
The external intercostal muscles contract during inhalation to increase chest volume. The diaphragm lowers during inhalation. Air flows in during inhalation because the air pressure in the lungs is lower than outside and air flows out when muscles relax. Changes in alveolar pressure produce flow of air into and out of the lungs. Interalveolar pressure is less atmospheric pressure where air flows into the lungs and interalveolar pressure is greater atmospheric pressure where air flows out of the lungs. In order to understand gas exchange, we need to think about some of the underlying principles that help us to understand the gases and their behaviours. Gas exerts forces on the surfaces it comes in contact with, known as pressure. The atmosphere contains oxygen, carbon dioxide, nitrogen and other gases, and this mixture exerts pressure known as atmospheric pressure. Each gas within the atmosphere exerts its own pressure, this will vary between gases and is called partial pressure. Partial pressure is important for predicting the movement of gases. A gas will move from an area of high partial pressure to an area of low partial pressure. Concentration of gas in a liquid such as blood is directly proportional to its partial pressure and solubility, and this is known as Henry's Law. So the greater the partial pressure, the greater the concentration of gas in a liquid. However, this is also dependent on solubility. Nitrogen is present in atmospheric air with a high partial pressure, but its concentration as blood is low due to its low solubility. So carbon dioxide is highly soluble in body fluids, oxygen is somewhat soluble, and nitrogen is very limited solubility. And you can see here the partial pressures in plasma pulmonary veins. So carbon dioxide is 40, oxygen is 100, and nitrogen is 573. Two other factors to consider regarding gas exchange are ventilation and perfusion. Ventilation is defined as the movement of air into the lungs and perfusion is the flow of blood in pulmonary capillaries. For gas exchange to be efficient, ventilation and perfusion should occur at similar rates. Gas exchange occurs in two sites of the body, in the lungs and the tissues. External respiration and its exchange of gases of the external air occur in the lungs. Blood arriving in pulmonary arteries has low partial oxygen and high partial carbon dioxide. Concentration gradients cause oxygen to enter the blood, carbon dioxide leaves the blood. Rapid exchange that allows blood and alveolar air to reach equilibrium. So gas exchange occurs in two sites in the body, in the lungs and the tissues. Internal respiration occurs in the tissues. But oxygenated blood mixes with deoxygenated blood from conducting pathway passageways. This lowers the partial oxygen of blood into the systemic circuit to about 95. Interstitial fluid, the partial oxygen is 40 and carbon dioxide is 45. So the concentration gradient in peripheral capillaries is opposite to the lungs and carbon dioxide diffuses in the blood and oxygen diffuses out of the blood. The diffusion of gases across the blood barrier barrier and the direction and the rate of diffusion are determined by differing partial pressure solubilities. So there are reasons present for efficiency of gas exchange. These are differences in partial pressure across the blood air barrier are substantial. Distances in, in, involving gas exchange are short. Oxygen and carbon dioxide are lipid soluble. Total surface area is large and blood flow and air flow are coordinated. That's the end of today's video. I hope you had fun listening to this and tune in to the next one. Thank you. Bye bye.